Hey guys, welcome to episode 4 of From Stud to Dud, where we're trying to figure out who built the best 90s sports car. Was it the Germans, was it the British, was it the Japanese, or was it the Americans? And in this episode, we're going to find out just how quick these sports cars are by comparing them to themselves, but more importantly, to a brand new-ish Toyota Camry. And yes, I know in the last episode I said we're going to go road trip them, but instead we took them to the track. How much fun can that be? A lot more. About two years ago, Paul, our racing driver who was the former Stig on Top Gear USA, set a time around this track in a Toyota Camry, which is pretty far from a performance vehicle. Let's play that footage now. And we're off in the TRD 2020 Camry. Decent grip and turn in. Actually feels pretty good. Flat over the hill. Brake pedal's nice and positive. A bit of understeer as you'd expect, but not really any torque steer. It does fine managing torque. Again, a little bit of power understeer here and there. One hundred eight eighty-two. I mean, it's it's really respectable. <laughs> now here's the challenge: we're going four, three, two, one in number of points. Of course, the car that's fastest gets four, the car that's slowest gets one, and if any of us can actually beat the Camry around the track, we get an additional point. Now let's talk about the standings. I was really scared that the Mercedes SL, my car is the ultimate loser, but it's not. It has 13 points. The ultimate loser right now is Roman in his Nissan ZX300 with 10 points. And then it's Nathan in his British beauty with 18 points. And finally, of course, the American Tommy in the Mustang with 19 points. So uh, I, I may still have a chance to get to the top or near the top. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're gonna start with the lowest, meaning Roman's going to go first with a timed lap, then Andre, then my XK8, not a beauty, it's a brute, and then finally, Tommy in the Mustang. Hey, uh, Tommy, I got a bit of a problem here. What's the issue? <laughs> uh, the issue is uh, that my helmet does not fit, but luckily there's a simple solution. We'll see what Andre does with his car because his simple solution is much more complicated. Thanks, Tommy. Problem solved. All right, so I have a secret weapon, and it's not the Z, it's the helmet. Look at that. There it is. It says Lamborghini. That's right. The most ferocious of sports cars. I'm going to channel my inner Lamborghini ishness and take this Z around this track and hopefully beat that 108 that was set by the Camry. Now this is a 1994 300ZX convertible. This is the most rare of all Zs because they only built about 1,500 of them. It's not the turbo, unfortunately, but that doesn't matter. I've got uh, Lamborghini-esqueness running through my veins. All right, Tommy, start me out. All right, here we go. In the Z, in three, two, one, go! Come Z! Well, all of the house feels rare. It's also the slowest. Did he leave yet? Oh, I'm sorry, he's going. And it's not even turbocharged, right? He is the lightest, I think. Wait, I think he's lighter than he you. already went off. Oh my. Oh, it just went off the track. <laughs> These tires don't have a lot of grip. I just figured out. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Oh, and the brakes don't have a lot of bite either. Oh my, oh my, oh my. <laughs> Trying to hit the apex here, not so easy. Kind of like a drift car almost. <laughs> so uh, I guess he's really going for it. This this is no joke. He is wearing a Lamborghini helmet. You know the one thing Paul always says it's about the tires, uh, and this car has whatever tires are on here. He gave up the ghost a long time ago, but you know what? The handling is still good. I mean, back in the day, this and the Supra. And of course the Mazda, they all fought for Japanese car dominance in the sports car world. And this has that Nissan Zenus brought into it. You know, he's moving all right. 
I mean, it, it's, well, it's not. No, I, I already checked my email. I checked my messages. I, 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 and I want to be facetious too, but I mean, he's, he's doing all right. This is full. Here we go, Ford. Come on, car. You can do it. 108, 108. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Right here, guys. And... A full 11 seconds slower. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Toyota Camry. I don't know if we could see that on camera, but I'm going to take a screenshot. Thing. See that? 11 seconds. Here, I'm going to tell him. How do you think you did? Oh, uh, not great. Yeah? Yeah, I think the car uh, has tires that have long given up the ghost, especially for track work. So what's your guess? Uh, one, 112. 119. Oh. <laughs> so 11 seconds off from what Paul did in a modern Camry. I was really hoping that your Lamborghini helmet would help, but I don't think it did. Roman, that was appalling. Yeah, that, that was... Uh, well, right. I, you know, as any good race car driver, I'm going to blame the tires. <laughs> and brakes. How were your brakes? <laughs> and, of course, this well-worn steering wheel. <laughs> wow. The light is All right, dry. now it's my turn. I'm going to beat the meat, match the Camry. Beat the meat, Andre. Beat the meat. Beat the meat. <laughs> I'm ready to go on my lap. Yeah, but your top is still up. Well, you know what? This is a German machine, right? Right. It's built for tall people. Let me show you. See my cowboy hat? Yeah. Okay. So I can get in. Look at this. I still have a couple of inches left. So, look at this. I can put my helmet on. Oh. Put my helmet on and still be mighty comfortable. Well, I guess it's better than spilling a bunch of hydraulic fluid all over the racetrack before the other cars race. So I suppose you should keep the top up and that's a really good reason, Andre. It is a good reason. My hydraulics are not working. Yeah. I mean, poorly working. It doesn't help that my tires are dry rotted, does well, it? That's what I'm trying to say is because your tires are such crap, maybe you shouldn't mess with it, but apparently you can't turn it off <laughs> because it's German. All right, so I have several things going for me. Uh, First of all, it's my horsepower, about 315 horses. Well, when it was new. It's a five liter V8. It's a 1992 Mercedes SL 500 or 500 SL. And lots of torque, over 300 pound feet of torque. Big V8, but there are a few things going against me. This car is heavy, I have bad tires, but I do have really great brakes, so I'm ready. Three, two, one, go! Yes, I am launching into space. I'm gonna remember what um, Paul used to teach me. Be smooth, be gentle, follow the line, rotate the car around your perfect center of mass. Actually, this hydraulic suspension is still working and it's quiet. Well, it's comfortable and it's quiet. Good. I am worried about his tires and his engine. I think his brakes are the only thing that actually are okay. Or am I wrong about that too? Oh no, brakes are good. Okay, so there it is. And then my brakes are still here. Also quiet good. In the last episode, I really... I won the braking test. Okay. Okay, the tires are going away now. And it's a little bit dangerous. Thank goodness it's a race course. Closed course. Professional driver. Well, let's face it, guys. These are really kind of GT cars at the end of the day, right? Mine is. Yeah, but they should be track worthy. Oh, oh, yours is a muscle car, Tommy. Your, yours really, you, there's no excuse. Mine's a mullet. So. I tried to uh, follow all everything that Paul used to teach me. Wow. He was really moving. <laughs> he was really moving by then. He was. I bet he was up to 100 miles an hour at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I that. Oh, that is too much. <laughs> How do you think you did? So I, I feel really good about this. Um, I only missed one turn. So I think I did about one, one thirteen. 
What? 120.10. So I'm like half a second behind Roman? No, oh. no, two seconds. No, right? no, because you were high 119. You're you 199, so you're almost 120. I thought it was so, 118. No. Uh, still, winner, winner, chicken dinner, dude. No, but the, my, my lap felt good. I, I felt good about it. Yeah, well, you're kind of in a boat, Andre. It's the top. If the top was down, that would have been a 107, 106. Hey, look at these tires, Tommy. Are the tires okay? Yeah, the tires already one lap and they cupped. It's a heavy <laughs> automobile, Andre. What? It's a heavy beast. I'm so upset. This is awful. If you want to come out here and lap your own car or go explore the motocross track or ride side-by-sides or motorcycles or go-karts, you got to check out IMI Motorsports. A huge thank you to them for letting us use their track. Oh, and by the way, all these four cars are going up for sale. You could own one of these fantastic all right, pretty good 90s sports cars, um, and we'll tell you how at the end. So, uh, I'm, unlike Andre, I'm actually gonna drop my roof because there's no way that I can fit in this car with the top. Um, uh, yeah, here we go. Come on. She's going. She's flexing her legs. That was a really quiet roof too, by the way. Hey Nathan, can I ask you a question? Sure. Why does your helmet have lots of mud and dirt on it? I use this for off-roading sometimes, which is sort of my preferred element. He's got the speed antenna up. Do you see that back there? What? It's really tall, actually. All right. Are you listening to music, Nathan, while you're... While you're driving? Is that... Well, I thought it would be all right, too. I mean, <laughs> You're that confident, huh? Well, uh, no, it's just a question of being leisurely. I mean, this thing is not exactly what I'd call a uh, track weapon, but I will say this. I do have an S mode, right. so I'm going to try that. Folks, I was mistaken. According to Brian, who emailed me, he said, no, Nathan, this is not a Spitfire. It's a reference to a World War II aircraft from Great Britain. It is a Mosquito, British Mosquito, fastest aircraft they had at one point in time during the war. Fine, okay, it's a mosquito. You know what? As long as it gets around this track in one piece, I don't care what it is. All right, are you ready, Nathan? I'm good to go. In three, two, one, go. Releasing all 290 horsepower there. A uh, very leisurely start, huh? Faster than yours. Well, it's, it's very stately. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And around we go. Trying to keep like the whole British thing going with the uh, proper this and all that. And honestly, I couldn't do it. Was this thing to Queen? Wasn't enough. Put on Motorhead, felt a lot better about this car. I think this is a uh, a fifth gear course, Tommy, just so you know. Fifth, fifth gear, gear, yeah. Exactly. I'm the only one here with the manual. Uh huh, keep it in fifth, right, Andre? Fifth gear. I don't think I'm going to beat Roman. This thing does not want to get up and go, really. But smooth is good. Paul taught me that smooth is good. And I will do what Paul says. Tommy, you, Andre doesn't get it, right? Fifth gear, a, a is, big... Is it was a show? No, no, no. It was a British no, show no, that no. you're making fun of. No, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm giving Tommy some oh, a you're bad advice. Oh, you exactly. trying to slow Tommy down. It's okay. bad advice. This is a... This is a Let's face it, it's, right. it's a go-kart track. If he ever gets out of second gear, I'll be surprised. Anyway, maybe it's like a British view fighter or a fighter. Maybe it's called Bullfighter. Those things are crazy angry planes. Here he comes! What a beautiful guy. And down we go. Oh, it smells a little bit. Yeah. Tire and brake. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! That's a, a 124.9. Go show him. <laughs> How does it getting even slower? How do you think you did? I don't think I did very well. This thing did not want to move. 124.9. <laughs> it didn't want to move. <laughs> I'm okay with it. The car came back in one piece and it's not smoking or anything like that. Um, although it does say engine coolant low now. 
Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh, oh. Engine yeah. cooler glow, that's yeah. Funny. And washer fluid low. God! Not <laughs> all British on you. So, Tommy, it's all up to you now. It's all up to me. Oh, Let's see if I can do it. These things were built for fat Americans, but there's not a lot of room in here. So uh, let's see what happens when I put on my helmet. I have a feeling that. <laughs> uh, yeah, not not super great. So I'm gonna have to pull the top down, and unlike Andre, watch how nicely this top works. Are you ready? A couple of latches. One button. Oh, yes. And I got four windows. Look at that beast. But I want to mention that with my helmet on, Roman, the Mercedes is still very comfortable. That is impressive. I want to mention Only that. the Germans could get a six foot three guy <laughs> with the helmet on. Into a roadster. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Back it up, Tommy. All right, all right. Oh! oh. It does that sometimes. Sometimes. That's a feature. It does that. By the way, Tommy, drifting is fast. That, that's a safety feature to let you know Nathan, you're in reverse, actually. Nathan, you agree with me? This is a fifth gear course. Get into fifth gear as soon as possible. What you want to do is actually take off in second and then drop the fifth. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's Paul's wisdom. Or that reverse. former stick Or reverse. So, let me introduce you to my Mustang. This is a 97 SN95 Mustang, 4.6 liter V8 with a whopping 215 horsepower, actually the lowest horsepower of all the cars here. And I also have a solder axle, which was great tech pre like 300 AD, but by the 1990s, it was a little outdated. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Oh! Big smoky burnout. That's how ZZ Top would have done it. A lot of understeer. Oh, that was not great. A lot of oversteer. <laughs> Oh, this thing is awesome! Now, of course, the 4.6 liter V8 made famous by the Crown Vic, which is a known performance car. Clutch kick second. Oh, a lot of sideways. Oh, he's sideways! Wow, again. Tommy, holy cow. <laughs> well, he's used to front wheel drive with all the minis he has, so... I think he took your advice, Nathan. <laughs> Drifting is faster. <laughs> wow. <laughs> This is turning into formula drift. We're gonna call him Tal Talladega Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is so great. Try to keep it out of the wall, that would be ideal. 5,000 RPM, 5,500 hard on the brakes, or what brakes I have. The back end just shimming around. It's like a high performance lazy boy. What an absolute beast. Hard on the brakes, a little bit of ABS action, that was good. Oh, a lot of understeer. Understeer is surprisingly fast. Not a lot of people give credit to understeer, but it uh, wins a lot of races. Let's see if I can glide it around this turn. Sorta. That was beautiful. The body roll is what I would describe as immense. Oh, oh yes. Good little slide. 55. Oh. Tell me he beat the Camry. All right, what's the time? He did not beat the camera. All right. Okay. Whoa, look at that. 116. Well, he beat everybody else. He yeah. beat everybody yeah. else, yeah. He basically significantly crushed. Basically all of us. So is it... But not a camera, so I'm fine. Not a camera. Oh, did he blow the clutch? Uh-oh. He wants to show Wow. Up. He loves doing that. I know. Wow. How was that? I have a new nickname for you. Talladega Tommy. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think you did? Um, I think that was like a, a, a 109. <laughs> you think you were that close to the Camry? Yes, I think I beat the Camry. 116, baby. <laughs> you killed Woo! all. Of, you killed all of us. Yeah, I'm Yeah, you beat everybody except for the Camry. I beat the littlest Z in the world by almost a full second. Well, uh, no, three by seconds. Three seconds. Oh, what were you? 119. 119. Oh, squish the worst Z in the world. More importantly, it's your dad. Absolutely. You know, guys, we're lucky we're not at a Cars and Coffee or else he would have crashed by now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> True that, man. <laughs> what a great day out at the track, and let's talk points. Now, the Mustang was just eight seconds slower than the Toyota Camry around the one-minute track, so we are, like, neck and neck, basically. 
absolutely not. But the Mustang is coming out on top with a total of 23 points. It's absolutely killing it. Now the Z was last, but after today, it's still last. 13 points in the Nissan. Andre's boat, the Mercedes-Benz, is up to 15 points. And Nathan came in last, but he's still in second overall with a total of 19 points. Since this is the last official video in this series, we all know who built the best 90s convertible. That's right, the best 90s convertible you can buy is an SN95 V8 Mustang. Followed by, of course, the proper Jaguar. And then the 500 to sell Mercedes-Benz. And then the Nissan non-twin turbo ZX convertible. Now, we're gonna do one more set of videos and what are we doing, Tommy? Yeah, so we're each gonna make a sales ad to try to convince you to buy our car because these are going up for sale over at tflbids.com very shortly. And whoever can make the best ad, whoever gets the most money for their car, will win an additional four points. Wow, all right, so maybe we can still change this order around. Mm, like oh, you're last regardless, but <laughs> yes, it's going to be close between Nathan and I, that's right. Are, yeah. there, are, are there any rules, Tommy? As to uh, no. no. I mean, lingerie is suggested, but What? Not yeah! All right, guys, one more video. Are you ready to do it? Yeah, I, I'm loving it. Let's go. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.